Skyrim Anniversary Edition gave anyone who was willing to buy Skyrim for the 28th time all of the Creation Club mods. These creations can go from cool houses, mini side quests, and a bunch of new weapons and armor. I want to see if I can beat the game with only Creation Club items, but that's not enough. I did it with the game set to Legendary Difficulty. So let's find out. Can you beat Skyrim with only Creation Club items on Legendary Difficulty? The rules for this one are pretty simple. I'm only allowed to use weapons and wear armor from the Creation Club. I'll allow myself to use shouts and restoration spells, but as far as actual real damage from weapons goes, you get the drill. Let's skip past the intro a bit. Normal ride in a Helgen, and I get to create my beautiful character. I went with an orc for the racial ability, turned him into an abomination, and named him Club Club. All went as per usual. Ignore Alduin, run past the population of a small town getting destroyed, and this time I enter the keep with Hadvar. Because I can't deal damage to any of these enemies, I sprint past all of them and almost get my ass handed to me. Now I'm outside breathing some fresh air, I wait around for the quest to update and head to Riverwood. I pick the warrior stone to help with my combat skills and finally head into town. While I'm here, I head into the inn to get a couple quests for the Creation Club items. First one is in Lost Knife Hideout, where you can find the Headsman's Cleaver. Before heading out, I get Sven to be my follower so I can at least have someone to do the fighting for me until I can get my hands on a weapon. Plus, who doesn't enjoy blatantly lying to a woman and manipulating her emotions so she can reject a guy, and then take the guy who set this up to go on adventures and not even see her? I mean, it makes so much fucking sense! Anyway, let's go to this hideout to get my first weapon so I can defend my sexy body. Okay, yeah, this turned into a shit show really quick. I was relying on Sven to kill the enemies, but ain't nobody got time for that, so I ran straight past all of them and to the end of the dungeon. I thought the blade would be in a chest or on a table to pick up, but no, of course not. It was on the bandit leader who just so happened to be very hellbent on killing me. I was running away from an entire goddamn army, and then I came up with a very clever plan. If I go into this edge and lure them closer to me, then I fall into the water, I can trick the bandit leader into falling to his death. At first, I really didn't think this was going to work, but just out of pure luck, he fell to his death and I could swim over and finally get my first weapon. I can only take the weapon though. The armor is just normal orcish heavy armor. Nothing the Creation Club adds, so I'll just take the weapon and start swinging. Oh, yeah. I forgot this was legendary difficulty. After a few deaths, I managed to get the weapon and run out of there as fast as possible. After this was one of the biggest challenges in this run, getting armor. To my knowledge, the best armor you can get at any level is the Daedric Mail armor from a pretty straightforward quest. Get a note, go to this enemy base, steal a ring back for some Khajiit, and trade it for the armor. That being said, it wasn't so straightforward when it came to actually clearing that bandit base. I headed to Windhelm and went from the stables to a small rundown house just east from it. The bandits here usually wouldn't be such an issue to deal with, except for one small issue. The Creation Club added another mod to the game, which adds elemental arrows to the loot pool. Fire ones explode on impact, and as it turns out, this bandit has those arrows. If I get hit, or even if it hits the ground near me, it's instant fucking death. And I got hit a lot. I couldn't even just send Sven in there, because he was constantly getting knocked down and not doing much damage. Here's a time lapse of me just trying to kill this bandit. Eventually, I snuck into the top of this house. I thought that the ring would be in this master lock chest, so with my two lock picks, I managed to pick it after reloading the game a dozen times. But no, that would be too easy. And this has got to be the worst loot I've ever seen in a master lock chest. So then I got the drop on the fire arrow wielding bandit, and after even more attempts, finally killed her. Turns out, she doesn't even have the ring on her. It was on a random dead body in the house. So this whole fucking time, I could have just snuck in there, stole the ring and ran. But, oh well. It's all dealt with now, and I can finally get this armor. Now I know a lot of you are going to complain that getting Daedric armor at this level is super overpowered, and on a normal run, I would agree with you. But trust me when I say that this armor did not protect me against much. It was the equivalent of putting a wet paper bag over your head and getting shot with a 9mm. 
I'm not sure what that means, but it didn't do much. Now that I have a way to defend myself, it's time to finally tackle the main quest. I make my way to Whiterun and speak to the Jarl, and for the first time in probably years, I talk to Farangar before I got the Dragonstone. Now I'm heading to Bleakfall's Barrow, the only dungeon in the game that every player knows like the back of their hand. Overall, the dungeon went fairly well. I got the Golden Claw, went through to the end, and managed to kill the boss Draugr. Now I'm ready to go and get the game really started. But first, I went to Riverwood to return the Golden Claw. A courier gave me a letter to another Creation Club quest, but I don't think I ever even bothered with this one. I gave Lucan the Claw, and now I can finally head to Whiterun to start getting things done. Once I got to Dragon's Reach, I totally forgot that if you do the quest in the right order, Delphine is there talking to Farangar about dragons and stuff. It has literally been years. I'm talking back in the day when I was 9 playing this game on the Xbox 360 since I've seen this. Anyway, now it's time to fight the first dragon. I was pretty scared going into this fight, and for good reason. I learned real quick that dragons were a no-go in this run. So I hid in the tower and waited for everyone else to get its health down before I went in and gave the final blow. These guys said I was dragonborn or something, but I don't know, I wasn't really paying attention. And then I got shouted at by some old men in the sky. This means it's time to climb the 7 million steps. I perform an evasive maneuver around the frost troll and get to high Hrothgar fairly unscathed. Now, I'm going to lay out an exception to the rules of this challenge. I'm allowed to use shouts, I, I know I mentioned it before, but there's a couple reasons for this. One, I need to use shouts in certain areas to progress the main quest. And two, I kinda had to rely on shouts sometimes to deal extra damage, because I only got a bow way later in the playthrough and I just couldn't crowd control or do damage from a distance without them. If you're mad at me for this, feel free to give the video a dislike. After learning a couple shouts, I was sent on a quest to retrieve the horn of Jürgen Windcaller from Ustengrav, but I took a detour first. I went to Whiterun and for some reason decided to grind my smithing skill. I think I did this at first so I could craft more armor that was added in the creation club, but after a certain point I was just doing it to increase my health through leveling up. I did the classic glitch to get out of bounds in Whiterun and go to the blacksmith's chest and then I sold everything back to him. I rinsed and repeated this a few good times, until I was stacked with money and had leveled up a few times. After that, I took a carriage to Morthal and headed to Ustengrav. I was very outgunned here, and I died a few times, so I made the choice to pretty much ignore all the enemies and run as fast as I could to the end. I was stupid and forgot to get the Become Ethereal shout here, which I really could have used later, but oh well, and eventually I got to the end of the dungeon. When I got out, I realized that I hadn't killed the bandits and the necromancer that were outside, and they really wanted me dead for some reason. So I devised a clever plan and lured them to the nearby Stormcloak camp, where they were taken care of pretty quickly. It really goes to show that teamwork makes the dream work. Real quick, I want to give a huge shout out to my members. You guys are making videos like this possible, and your support goes a long way in helping me continue to make videos on a semi-consistent basis. Alias and Waluigi, you guys are stupid for spending that much on me, but I appreciate it a lot, and it really helps justify the amount of time and effort I put into these. I'm not fueled by money by any means, don't get me wrong, I love making videos, but I'm also an adult with a job, so it helps a lot in letting me feel good about the time I'm putting into this whole YouTube thing. I think we can make this actually work, so thank you, really. If you want to become a member and get all these perks, click that join button down below and you can join our little squad for as low as a dollar a month. Anyway, let's keep going with this challenge. Now it's time to go to Riverwood and confront Delphine about taking the horn. God, I hate her so much. After having a chat with her, I go back to the Greybeards and learn the final part of the unrelenting force shout. So now the fun with shouts can really begin. Kynesgrove is where I'm off to next, to kill a dragon to prove the Delphine that I'm dragonborn, as if I couldn't just shatter off a cliff to prove that. The dragon fucking yeets me, then on my second try, I manage to kill it. Now you know what time it is. Spy shit! But first, I took a little detour and went to Riften. I was going to do the exploit in the Ragged Flagon where I can get out of bounds and loot all of the vendor chests, but instead I accidentally ran into another creation club mod. A ghost was in the rat way and it went into a little sewer for some reason. I followed behind and realized I'd gotten myself into something I was not prepared for. 
There was a sword in the middle, surrounded by rooms I had to clear before I could unlock it, and every room has its own boss fight. Now listen, I have over a thousand hours in the Binding of Isaacs, I was ready for this shit. It was overall pretty cool, and the first two went down fairly easily, all things considered. But in the final room, I had to deal with a bunch of skeletons plus a four stage boss fight. I died over and over again, but after a long time and a pinch of luck, I managed to beat it. Turns out the sword you get from this isn't even that great, but it means that now Sven can also be using Creation Club stuff too, so I don't mind too much. After this, I went for another Creation Club quest. I thought this was a good opportunity to check out a lot of the content that I usually skip. In this one, we go to a banquet feast that I was invited to for some reason. It's in a cave in the middle of nowhere, but inside the cave is actually this really cool little manor. This whole thing had vampire written all over it. Not to mention the obvious orange eyes that all the people in the house had. I sit down in the chair ready for my meal and read the note. Oh no, that, that doesn't sound good. Oh shit, oh fuck, oh god. All hell broke loose. There were gargoyles and the waiter himself has like a million health. Shit got hectic really quick. I try for way too long to take these guys out, but I die over and over and over again. They all just had way too much health for me to handle, so after a while, I decided just to leave the cave and maybe come back to it later. I never ended up coming back, but it's the thought that counts. Anyway, now back to the main quest. I go to Solitude and give Malborn my weapon and armor and make the stupid decision to not give him any potions. Well, it was less of a decision and more of a lapse of judgment. But that means I'm going to have to rely on spells to heal. In this quest, we sneak into the Thalmor Embassy and get some important documents, because Delphine's schizophrenic ass thinks the Thalmor are behind the dragons, somehow. I go in, and overall things go pretty smoothly, except for one tiny thing. For some reason, my controls just stopped working randomly, and reloading a save didn't help either. I would be fighting, and then all of a sudden, I'm just stuck standing there with no HUD like a dickhead. I did find a workaround though. If I used the enable player controls command when it happened, it fixed the issue and I could keep playing as usual. I don't know what was causing it, but it was pretty random and damn annoying. Anyway, after I finally dealt with this goddamn mage and the people inside, it was all pretty straightforward. I tried for a while to kill the frost troll, but that just didn't work out, so I left and went back to Delphine to continue the story. Now I'm off to find an old man, so I go back to Riften and enter the Ratway to look for this guy. The Thalmor and the sewers were a little annoying, but it didn't take long to get past them. And now I've got Esburn, it's time to go back for a nice little reunion between the two. So it turns out that now we gotta to go to Skyhaven Temple. Well, I say that like I didn't know it was coming, but let's be real, we've all played this game a good 10,000 times. Editor Zeke here, I just wanted to mention that this Dawnguard guy just kept on following me everywhere. I don't know where he came from, but I can't kill him, and he would just randomly follow me into every part of the map. I just treated him as a second follower who likes to walk instead of run, but I don't know. I just ignore all the enemies and go through as fast as possible, because this part of the game is really boring. Because then, it's time to go to Parthenax, who says I need an Elder Scroll, so then I go and get that, which took fucking forever because Dwemen dungeons are just the worst. And, to make it even better, over an hour of my footage got corrupted because the power went out. So after this point of footage, there was no usable recording until after all the Elder Scrolls stuff was dealt with, but I'll give a good rundown of what happened. I tried for way too long to bucket my way into the Duema Ruin, but it just didn't work. Then I went through as per usual. In the corrupted recording, I went through Black Reach, got the Elder Scroll, then went to start the first fight with Aldwin. I realized that I just wasn't strong enough to fight him yet, so I scaled down the side of the mountain midway through the fight and fast traveled away. I did a bit of research and found out there's a Creation Club bow that you can get by completing a quest in Whiterun. There's an assassination plot against the Jarl, and I need to get to the bottom of it. So I start it, and go to Silent Moon's camp to continue the quest, and that's where the footage comes back. Oh, also, you may have noticed the game looks way prettier now. Between recordings, I installed an e &B and a few graphics mods, plus Sky UI. I didn't get any mods that change any mechanics of the game at all, just to make it a little nicer to look at. Here's a screenshot of my mod list, so you believe me. Anyway, after a few attempts, I get through Silent Moon's camp and read the note, which says there's someone in Dragon's Reach right now about to kill Jarl Bolin. So I make my way there and take the would-be assassin out. On his body is the bow, and I can finally do damage from a distance now. 
When it comes to the bow, I'm allowing myself to use non-creation club arrows, because having to farm the elemental ones would just be a huge pain in the ass and take way too much time. Plus, I think it's fair considering the bow is from the creation club, so I think it's fine. Once again, if you don't like it, feel free to give the video a dislike and go off of me in the comments. I can take it. After a long, long time, I managed to kill Alduin, and we're on to my favorite part of the game. Politics, yay. I got to trap a dragon in Whiterun's castle in order to go to Sovngarde to kill Alduin for good, but the Jarl won't let me do that until I organize a truce in the Civil War, so Whiterun's not threatened during that. So I go to Tullius and Ulfric and get the whole gang to meet at High Hrothgar, where we try to find some short-term peace. I'll let Elwyn stay this time in hopes of one day earning her affection, and sort out what I think is probably the most fair deal we'll get. Now it's finally time to enter the endgame. I try my best to get this guard out of the way so the dragon doesn't kill him, but he was destined for his fate. Then we trap it, and I go to Sovngarde prepared to finish this challenge. As per usual, Skullduffin was the hardest part. Once I get into the dungeon, I die a few times just trying to get away from the army of Draugr following me, but I eventually get away from them and make it outside. It was a mad dash to the portal, but I got in there before the Dragon Priest took the staff out, and I was ready to finish this game. I talked to Sun, 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 I don't know, and I managed to beat him in battle. I get let into the Hall of Valor, which, when you think about it, is way too small to hold the countless souls that are here in Sovereign Guard. Like, you'd think with how many people have died over the years that this place would be a lot bigger to house everyone, but I guess Bethesda just didn't think about that. We go outside and have our final battle with Alduin. Well, these guys did most of the work. I, I kind of just sat there for a bit and did the final blow. And with that, I beat Skyrim with only Creation Club mods on Legendary difficulty. But wait, there's one more thing I need to do. After all of this, I think that Club Club needs a place to settle down. So I went to the Steward in Dragon's Reach and bought myself a nice Creation Club home already kitted out for me. And with that, Club Club can rest and the video is over. Thank you all so much for watching. Huge thanks to Waluigi and Alias for their support as Insane Person tier members, and to all of my other channel members that make doing videos like these possible. Join the Discord server linked in the video description down below, and check out the channel if you want to see my other challenge videos. Have a wonderful day.